So let's first start by talking about the difference between the two biggest families in typography, which is the serif and the sans serif. So the serif typeface are differentiated from the sans serif by these tiny little feet that you can see highlighted in red. And they are said to be slightly older than the sans serifs. But the reason why they have these little feet is actually because of stone carving. So back in the days when people needed to carve out letters, Latin letters in stone, um, usually the designer would use a paintbrush and paint the letters that they want, but the stonemasons would have to carve it out from that painting. And I don't know how many of you guys have carved into stone before, but not only is it a difficult art to master, but it's also incredibly difficult to carve out Latin letters, Latin typefaces, on stone without creating these tiny little feet. It's just very difficult to carve out a 90 degree angle without having these reliefs. So hence a lot of the serif typefaces that you'll see will look a lot more traditional, a lot more conservative than the more contemporary modern sans serifs. And when you're using different typefaces, usually people tend to use the serif typefaces for something quite serious. For example, a law officer's letterhead and the sans serifs are reserved for slightly more more modern contemporary designs. So once we've classified our typeface into serifs and the sans serifs, the serifs are further subdivided into four major families, the first of which is old style. So this is pretty much the oldest serif uh, typeface family. So this family includes fonts such as Adobe Jensen, such as Centaur, such as Gaudi Old Style, and their typeface is modeled on what text used to look like in the 1400s. So very conservative, very um, old looking. And then if you come further into the future, you've got the transitional serif family, which is slightly more modern looking. And a lot of these fonts you'll be familiar with. This is your Times New Roman. This is your Baskerville. This is your Georgia, for example. And then if we come even further into modern times, you've got the modern serif typeface family. So one such example is Didot, which is the typeface that you see on the title of Vogue magazine. And it's an incredibly modern yet classy looking typeface. And finally, in the serif family, you've got the slab serifs. And we'll talk about slab serifs in just a second. But firstly, we're going to talk about how do you differentiate from these four major classes in the serif family. And it's actually quite easy to do. Now, when you compare these three styles side by side, old style versus transitional versus modern, if you have a look at the thinnest versus the thickest part of the letters, you'll see that as you progress from the older to the more modern typefaces, you'll see an increased difference in what we call the modulation of the typeface. So if you concentrate on the O's, for example, comparing the old style to the modern, that thickness here versus this is much larger than, for example, this versus this part. And a lot of this modulation comes from when people used to write with flat nibbed pens. So for example, you imagine, you know, somebody in the Shakespearean era with their feathered pen, the way that they turn that feather into a pen is by chopping the tip. So you create a flat nib and then it holds the ink and allows you to write. Now that flat nib is what gives you this modulation, this difference between the thickest and the thinnest parts of the font. Equally, if you take a highlighter and you try to write versus if you you take a sharpie, you'll notice that the typeface that you create will look different. So what about the slab serif? As you can see, there's pretty much zero difference between the thickest and the thinnest parts of the font. And it was designed intentionally like so. Even though it's one of the modern members in the serif family, it doesn't follow the rule of the more into the future you go, the, high, the greater the difference between the thickest and the thinnest parts of the font. So why is that? Well, slab serif was actually created for a particular reason, and it was created for newspaper printing. Now, think about the times when newspaper used to be printed on really poor quality paper. What happens when you put ink on poor quality paper? Well, the ink will spread out and you will lose a lot of detail. So if you think back to those comic books to be hand lettered, the typeface that's used is a type of comic book typeface, but it looks very similar to this kind of slab serif. And the reason why it was styled like this is so that it would look good despite the poor quality of the paper.